In this video, we'll see the relationship between the musical notes and their frequencies. We'll start by quickly introducing the notes on the six strings of a classical guitar with standard tuning. And we'll take a look at the main frequencies of these notes. Later on, we'll play these six notes on the guitar and analyze this recording in MATLAB using signal processing techniques. By using the FFT and spectrogram in MATLAB, we'll see which harmonics of the main frequency are strong, hence we'll be able to describe the timbre for an instrument. Then by using a grand piano from the GarageBand application, we'll play the same notes and do the same analysis to compare the frequency spectrum with that of the classical guitar. Finally, we'll do the frequency analysis for a few chords in the classical guitar and see the difference with the frequency analysis of the single notes. In this website, classicalguitar101.org, we can see the notes of the six strings on the guitar. This is the standard tuning. From top string, which is numbered as sixth string, to bottom, which is numbered as the first string, the strings are low E, A, D, G, B, and high E strings. Now let's be more specific and see exactly what these notes are corresponding to. So here we can see that the sixth string will sound the E2 note when plucked, and E2 note has the main frequency of 82.41 Hz, meaning that it will create a sinusoidal signal which vibrates at 82.41 times a second. However, in the analysis, you'll see that this will not be the only frequency that will be created when this string is plucked. It will have harmonics, but we'll get to that later. So if we continue with the other strings, the fifth string, which is A2, is going to have a frequency of 110 Hertz. Fourth string, D3, 146.83. Third string, G3, frequency of 196 Hertz, B3, 246.94, and the E4 string will have a frequency of 129.63 Hertz. You can see the whole list of the frequencies in this website. You can see that the frequencies we just mentioned can also be seen at exact same values here. For example, E2 is 82.41. I've tuned my classical guitar with an electronic tuner. Now let's hear what these tuned strings sound like when we plug them. I've extracted the audio from the video you just saw and saved it as an mp3 file. It's named EADGBE. And now we are going to execute this first block. With the audio info command, we can see the information of the file. Here, the important part is the sampling frequency that you can see here, 48 kilohertz. And this is the duration, nearly 30 seconds. Now we are going to resample this signal in order to reduce the data size. And we'll use this resample signal in the spectrogram. The reason I'm reducing the sampling frequency is to narrow down the frequency axis which will directly correspond to the Nyquist frequency, which is the half of the sampling frequency. Now let's execute this block. This is the resampled signal. Now we are going to focus on the second note that we played, which is the A2 note. We are going to trim our original signal to get that particular note. So this was the A2 note there. And now we are going to resample the A note section. 
we are going to use it in the spectrogram in the beginning. This time we are going to get the frequency analysis for the A2 node using fast Fourier transform and we will see which frequencies are present in that section. So this is the frequency spectrum for node A. And if we look at these peaks, which are 110 stands for the A2 frequency, as you can remember from the previous part of the video. And this is the octave of it, or you can say the second harmonic. So it's doubled the frequency. You can see that 110, 220. And the third one is 330. We seem to be missing these fourth and fifth harmonics. There's a small amount for the fourth harmonic you can see there. But we have a significant one in 660 Hertz. The reason we don't seem to have components in 440 and 550 Hertz is the characteristic of this instrument. This is what differentiates this guitar from another musical instrument and probably from another classical guitar. This distribution specific to this instrument is representing the timbre of the instrument. Now we are going to see the difference between the high E and the low E notes. This was the low E note. And this is the frequency spectrum for low E. You can see the frequency components. We have one at 81.9. And the second harmonic is the double of it. Third one, fifth and sixth. Now let's execute these two blocks. So this was our high E and this is the high E spectrum. Here we can see the differences between the high E note and low E note. Uh, you can see that we basically see the two components in high E, which is 330 Hertz and double of it 660. However, in low E we have, we can see five different components. Now we focused on certain part of the recording and analyzed the single notes. But what if we'd like to analyze the whole recording and all of the notes? We can use spectrogram for this, which utilizes discrete Fourier transform. First, we are going to look at the five parameters that I've used. So we have the first parameter is the signal that we would like to analyze. In this block, it's the resembled A2 signal. Second parameter, 4000, is the window size. Third one is the number of overlap. Here I chose 15, which is an arbitrary value. The fourth parameter, which is 960 in this example, specifies the resolution in the frequency axis, meaning that we are going to have 960 divided by 2 plus 1, 481 frequencies available in the frequency axis. And the last one is the sampling frequency. Remember that we had reduced from 48,000 to 20,000. Now let's execute this block and see the result for A2. You can see that this is similar to the FFT analysis that we just did in the fifth block. We have a time axis on the left and the color and intensity shows the power of that particular frequency in the X axis. Now let's execute this eighth block. This is for the whole recording. The parameters are the same. You can see that this spectrogram gives lots of information in a simple graph. We have all the six nodes in the y-axis and we can follow them along the time. Let's zoom in from two kilohertz to zero. And you can see the frequency components. Let's mark them. Our first note was low E, as you can remember. So we can see that the first component is at 83 Hertz. So 
so you can see the first components frequencies here actually since we know the base frequencies of the notes by looking at this graph we can easily tell which notes are played and the frequency components for a single note and their intensities can tell us which instrument is being played okay so let's analyze this figure in detail so remember that we had played EADGBE notes on the classical guitar so this was the E2 this was A2 this was D3 this was G3 this was V3 and this was E4 and again if we zoom into this between 2 kilohertz and 0 we can see this in a better shape and let's see these components one by one so in E2 we have 83 hertz 104 145 187 250 and 333 and we had seen that the exact values for these notes were 82 that 41 111.46.83 196.96 246.94 and it was 329.63 for the high E. So you can see that these frequencies are close enough. However, we can get a better frequency resolution if we change the parameters for the spectrogram. Now we'll play the exact same notes on the grand piano in GarageBand application and we'll see the spectrogram for that. Here you can see the original recording that we did in GarageBand and its resampled signal. Now we are going to execute the spectrogram for this with the same parameters. And now we can see the spectrogram right here. You can see that we again have six nodes. And there are some gaps, uh, especially between the fourth and the fifth note. Remember that I was changing the octaves on the GarageBand application, so there was a slight delay. You can even relate it with that. And if we focus on between 0 and 2 kilohertz, we can see the distribution of the frequencies for these six notes. So this is the spectrogram output for the piano EAD GB notes. And if you would like to remember the one for the guitar, we can see it here. So let's see these on a single page. At the first glance, we can see that in the guitar, we have more frequency components that can be observed in the spectrogram. However, this doesn't mean that the piano has less frequency components. Remember that the piano that we were using is a digital one. Now as a final example, let's play some chords on the guitar and see their frequency spectrum. Okay, now let's evaluate this first section and hear our chords in MATLAB. Okay, these were 
the seven chords actually these were from the house of the rising sun song so this is the resampled signal and now in the last book we are going to see the spectrogram for these seven chords we can see that this is a much more colorful figure when you compare it to the single notes we have seven chords in the time axis you can see that and when we zoom in between zero and two kilohertz you can see the picture in detail you see that we have much more frequency components when compared to the single notes for example the first chord that we had played was a minor and you can see the frequency components of the notes played in the a minor chord so this is the comparison between the single notes EADGB on a guitar on this graph and on this figure we see the chord spectrum for the guitar that we played recently you can see that we have lots of different frequency components since we are playing chords here remember that we were playing for example a minor here and this was C major this was D major this was F we again had a minor E major and again a minor so while playing chords we get a very rich and colorful spectrogram